Hello, Vyas. So today we have got a person who is very well known. So the moment you think of Kotayam, the moment you think of Mahatanga University, you think of Dr. Sabu Thomas. So here he is. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Thomas, uh, to this fellowship, Bartha. And uh, we would like to know about your academic journey from where you started. And today you are known as foundation of an institution. You have built up some institutions. So it would be nice if you could tell our viewers about your academic journey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Washington. I am Professor Sabu Thomas, Professor of Nanoscience and Polymer Science at Mahatma Gandhi University, Kotem, Kerala, India. I am extremely delighted to interact with uh, Dr. Washney about my academic journey. I have completed 37 years of service in Mahatma Gandhi University, in different capacities as a lecturer, as a reader, as a professor, and uh, as the head of the institution, as the vice chancellor of the university. I remember I started my career in 1987 after completing my PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Karatpur. I still remember when I came for the interview with the then Vice Chancellor, Professor Anandamurthy. He asked me an important question. Dr. Thomas, can you work in Vakram? And he continued, Dr. Thomas, we have nothing to offer you. Within a few minutes, I showed a sort of blueprint to then, then Vice Chancellor that I can transform Mahatma Gandhi University to Center of Excellence of international importance. Professor Murthy recruited me as a lecturer in polymer chemistry in the School of Chemical Sciences of Mahatma Gandhi University. Dear friends, colleagues, I had to wait for at least three months to get a seat in the university because the university was just coming up, absolutely nothing. And many people advised me after graduating from Indian Institute of Technology, don't join in a rural area university with nothing. But dear friends, I took it as a challenge. I started working and I started collaborating with many institutes in the country. I remember National Chemical Laboratory, Indian Science Bangalore, Robert Research of India, Cotton, Regional Research Laboratory, now it is known as NA Institute of Andrew. I wrote to the directors of all six institutes. Interestingly, they all agreed to support me. So I have recruited PhD students. These students have yes, I could get a lot of nice ideas with him. During my short time before postdoc, I wrote several projects to CSAR, DST, DBT, wherever I can tap funding. I wrote many proposals. And some days I slept in the laboratory and slowly, slowly, I could get a lot of grant. My postdoc assignment in, uh, in North America was very useful. I came back and I started publishing it. Whatever I learned from my postdoctoral assignment, I tried to implement in Mahatma Gandhi University. And I, three students, CSIR, DBT, Library of Polymer Science, I used to travel, I used to go to uh, China. But my, my first international country was Taiwan. I traveled through Taiwan universities. I remember that time, 1993 or 94, I gave almost 10 lectures. In I started interacting with the rest of the world. And I also started organizing symposia and meetings and conferences in Mahatma Gandhi University. I remember I organized something like 100 conferences, international conferences in the campus. 
And some of them were in cooperation with Nanda Kumar Kaldikal, my colleague in physics. And I took a statistics, how many people visited Mahatma Gandhi University from abroad? More than 2,500 people from abroad visited our campus. You remember when I started my career, many people told me, Dr. Thomas, the connectivity with the airport is very poor and nobody will come. 2,500 people abroad visited Mahatma Gandhi University campus. 25,000 people came from different parts of the country to our campus. We would partners there. This really facilitated me to enter into a large number of international collaboration. India, Austria, India, Brazil, you, you name anything, India, India, Germany, large number of cooperative programs have established. India, France, I think with France, we have the maximum number of projects. And I was successful in sending my students abroad. Every PhD student is actually sent abroad, at least six months. And if you look at my publications, you will see all my publications are actually coded by professors across the world. Then I started sending my master's students abroad. I used to receive lots of students to my laboratory. And many professors came here on sabbatical. And we started an international joint conference in many countries, like China, with France, with the United States, joint international conference. I remember one time I went to China with a big team of people from India. We have organized an international polymer conference in, uh, in Beijing. There are 30, 30 to 40 people from India went there. So dear friends, I, I did a huge network. This resulted in a large number of publications. Look at 1,800 publications I made. More than 200 books I edited. More than 20 pages. I've established is more than 200. I travel all over the world. So research has taken me all over the world. And I could mold a large number of students. So my students are abroad. You know, if you look at University of Stockholm, I have a brilliant PhD student, became a senior professor. In Stanford, we have a brilliant fellow. He's easy. I'm sure eventually he'll become a Stanford professor. And many are settled in Germany, uh, in industry and academia. So I am glad to tell you that an academic position is something very interesting because I worked in, in industry and academia. In academia, you get lots of freedom. I think we should make use of it. And we can mold a large number of students. I have supervised 130 PhD students, large number of master's students. Now, whenever, whenever I go to other country, I stay with my PhD students. I was in South Africa, uh, I mean, just last week. I had a PhD student, she did excellent work with me and she now doing extremely well. And I went with her, we spent a lot of time with her. In the teachers are always proud of their student success. Yes, and yes, yes. To... I'm really excited actually. And, actually. And in fact, such fantastic students. A, such a strong pillar. Uh, because uh, not only doctoral student, but you have been sending your master's students also abroad, which is it's yes. something very rare uh, in other institutions. So how do you feel it helped you in uh, creating institution of eminence, center of excellence, making uh, uh, MGU a place known word over? You see, whenever I send students abroad, Dr. Vashni, we have joint publications, joint patents, joint books. And if you look at the polymer science ranking my American Chemical Society, polymer science of Mahatma Gandhi University is ranked number one. We have beaten all the IHs. Mm. So international cooperation, international collaborations make a pivotal role in getting the highest rank. You see, we are zero. If you look at 87, we were nothing. Now we became number one in the country in polymer science. So international collaborations, international travel, international exchange make a lot of visibility for institutions. I've established standards of excellence in nanoscience. So CNRA also helped us a lot. Many nanotech people, many nano conferences be organized in the campus. So we have state-of-the-art laboratories in polymer and nanoscience and nanotechnology. We also started new centers of excellence. When I was a vice chancellor, I started energy center. I started robotic center. I started food science and technology. So I have started something like 10 centers. And I started your exchange program. For France, we have joint PhD program. 
with Poland, we are doing PhD program. With Australia, we are doing PhD program. So students come over here, my students go there. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is the strong. And I explore all the all the PhD positions wherever you have postdoc positions, PhD positions, and uh, I get a lot of information. Yes, Vashni. Yes. Yeah, I think this is the strongest point uh, collaboration could provide you, and uh, yes. uh, accordingly for your research, you have been recognized globally, and uh, you have got also honorary casa and honorary professorship. So, could you tell us about these degrees? Uh, I'm sure they are based on your rich experience and uh, strong publications, strong network of students, and large number of collaboration with that country. Yes, that's a very important point, Dr. Vashni. If you look at my honorary schools uh, with the University of Lorraine, with the University of South Brittany, this is basically because of the large number of work we have done, jointly, high level of publication very good quality cases. So if you look at Lorraine, there's a very interesting story. We started cooperating with the University of Lorraine in 2009. A faculty came over here, so did their Ruxel. That was a starting point. Ruxel was really impressed by my laboratory. He invited me to France. We established a very active cooperation. That led to ANR project. That led to Indo-French program. That led to exchange of something like more than 25 students of my group went to France. Their group came here. Eventually, I became one of the highest publishing international professor with Lorraine. And then they recommended me for the honorary sponsor. Similarly, I did the same thing in University of South Brittany. We had a humble beginning in 2005. And here, Vashni evolved with this into a large number of doing PhD program. I think with the University of South Brittany, we have very close to end doing PhD. Still, we are continuing doing PhD program. That also led to the fact that University of South Brittany, if you look at the international collaborations and number of publications, my group is number one. And eventually that led to actually many awards from uh, University of South Brittany, including my visiting professorship and honorary schools. Uh, so I strongly believe in international cooperation collaborations. Dr. Thao Thomas, uh, from being a young faculty to vice chancellor, leading various international cooperation, first participating, then developing, conceiving, planning, and eventually leading. Now you have a rich experience. What would be your message to the young faculty or postdoctoral students? How should they plan their research journey? How should they plan their career? and what kind of precautions they should take, what kind of advancement and approaches they should take when they are trying to build their career. You know, my, my message to people who finish PhD from India, those who are trying for a postdoc, I think students who are really interested in research, high quality research, should go for a postdoc. It could be a Humboldt Fellowship. It could be a GSPS Fellowship. Some sort of fellowship is extremely important to, to excel in academia. And when you go for a postdoc, there are lots of opportunities for postdoc fellowship. You know, with the United Kingdom, with the Germany, with the France, with the Italy, with the United States, lots of facilities. And when you, once you have a postdoctoral experience, you get a lot of confidence in getting up new programs. That's what uh, happened to me. When I went to North America, I started a new area of research. When I went to Europe, did a visiting fellowship, I started a new area of research, collaboration. So I always recommend young PhDs should go for a postdoctoral program to give you lots of confidence, high impact publications. You will be able to make a good letter. Similarly, those who start after the person in India, my advice is work is still in heart. Submit proposals to all the agencies in the country. Challenging proposals, that's very important. Involve all international collaborations. See, a large number of collaborations are possible now in the country. Organize meetings, symposia, workshops on a regular basis. And they must also travel across the globe for conferences, meetings, and symposia. 
See, when I go to a conference, I remember Dr. Vashni, I went to, went to the conference in the United States, 2000 goals. After the conference, I gave 30 lectures in the United States. I visited all the foreign and national US. And I know what they're doing now. And that, the certain large number of cooperation to use the conference. So there are a lot of potential in this country to accept. I request all the young participants make use of it. Effective. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for your time today. And your message is very clear. Work hard, work with passion, develop networking, make presentation, develop networking, and then again come back, work in collaborations, go for bigger goals, challenge funding agency with your wonderful ideas, and then build up the institution. Thank you. It was wonderful talking to you and uh,